Welcome to Cash Chats with me, Andy Webb from BeCleverWithYourCash.com. This is the podcast to help you make the most of your money. In episode 371, I'll be taking you through how ISA transfers work to make sure you keep that tax-free protection when moving money. I'll be taking you through the different cashback accounts from Santander that will give you money back on your bills, the Edge, the Edge Up, the 123 and the 123 Lite. What is the best one, whether you're an existing customer or a new customer? Plus, as we are very, very rapidly approaching the end of the financial year, I'll be taking you through some actions you need to be taking in the coming weeks to make sure you don't miss out on money and allowances and all that kind of stuff. All of that and my deals of the week. So make sure you stay tuned for that at the end of the episode. But let's get into it. This is episode 371 of Cash Chats. As we've covered many times before, there are a number of price hikes coming at the end of March, beginning of April. And then we have the new financial year starting on the 6th of April as well, which in itself will see other kind of increases and allowance changes. So I thought it'd be worthwhile just taking you through a few things that are worth doing over the next few days, just to kind of make sure you don't miss out. The first one I want to talk about here is adjusting your standing orders for your bills. Now I'm going to talk about in a moment, uh, current accounts that can earn you cash back on your bills. And I often think a great way of doing that is having a separate account simply for bills, whether you're earning cash back or just a budgeting, whatever it might be. If you do the same, you may well have a certain amount of money going into those accounts. And that covers all the bills. And then that's sorted the next month, another standing order goes in and covers those bills. Of course, with so many bills going up, you might want to go back and just check that there's enough cash going in. Because whether that's your council tax, your energy, your broadband, your mobile phone, your water bill, all of those are going up. They've all gone up for me. Every single month, that could easily be another 10, 20 quid, depending on the size of your bills. But what you want to make sure is you don't go overdrawn into that expensive overdraft or even have those payments bounce and end up owing those companies. Potentially, that's not great in the start, but also kind of impact on your credit report. So make sure if you have got a separate bills account for whatever reason, if not, maybe set one up. I think it's a good thing to do. Make sure there's going to be enough money in there for when those bills change. Next thing to do, second thing is for Sunday. Yes, it's Easter Sunday and you might be busy, you might have plans. So maybe it's the day before, maybe it's the day after. But broadly speaking, on Sunday, you want to be taking a meter reading for your gas and electricity. Even if you have a smart meter, I would suggest doing this because the energy price cap is going to drop by a huge 12% on the 1st of April. And you want to make sure that the meat, the energy company isn't going to be charging you for any energy at those higher, more expensive rates. Okay, we're not going to be talking about a huge amount of money, but it's well, well, well worth doing this. I would always take a photo of uh, do this and keep them on there so you've got something to refer back to if you need to. So make sure you do that say on the uh, 31st of March, ideally, but a day or two, uh, either side won't do any harm as well. Next up, I, if you haven't already done this, if you're out of contract, I would start researching mobile and broadband deals now. See what offers are out there. See what prices you might be able to lock in at before those hikes do come along. And most of them are going to be on the 31st of March or the 1st of April. Did cover this in more detail in a recent episode. So that'll give you a bit more information about some of the things you can do. Again, see what kind of prices are there. See if you can haggle as well. But I would just be very careful here about doing this before the price hikes that your new price that you agree to isn't going to suddenly go up by that same price hike. Now, hopefully they won't do that, but it's worth just making sure when you are uh, going through that process or if you're on the phone or web chat chatting to them, just making sure that you aren't suddenly going to see a sudden hike all of a sudden. But yeah, if you're out of contract, this is going to be a big, big, big money saver by moving around or haggling. Now, I don't know how often you send stamps, but number four on this list is if you do ever send any stamps, buy them before the 2nd of April, because on the 2nd of April, they're going to go up by 10 pence. Now, this is the second time in six months that first class stamps have gone up. Third time in a year, second class stamps also went up a year ago, and they keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. They are very, very expensive now. If you think you are going to be sending anything, even if you're thinking ahead to Christmas, you're going to send any cards, even if it's a handful rather than the dozens and dozens that I'm sure we all used to do when we were younger, then buy them now. Be really careful here when you're doing this though, that you buy them from a proper retailer. By proper retailer, I mean the post office, a supermarket, anywhere like that. Because if you go to uh, a corner shop, as I've discovered in the past a few times, they can, if they wish, mark those prices up to whatever they want. Okay, so you won't necessarily be getting the actual uh, price of a stamp. And when you're buying a book of, you know, 
12 or whatever it might be, it's hard to actually know what the individual price that was, particularly if you're not sure what they are anyway. So I would go to one of those normal places. You can even, if you're an online supermarket shop, get them added on there. Now, again, something else, number five, that I did cover a few weeks ago when I talk about the allowance change that's coming in from the 6th of April for your dividend gains uh, and capital gains tax allowance, the tax free allowances for both of those. Now, most of you aren't going to be having things like a fine wine collection or uh, art collection or things like that, where that's going to be sort of liable. But you may well have investments. And if they've grown a lot and you want to, over the years against you know, a cumulative thing or people have a lot of money, this could happen. If they've grown, you want to maybe crystallize that growth by selling them uh, now while that capital gains allowance is £6,000 because from next year, it's dropping down to £3,000. Again, it might not apply to you too much. If it doesn't, that's fine. You might want to use this as an opportunity though just to get use the allowance for this year, uh, maybe put it into an ISA um, and then next year, you're still going to have three grand, but obviously that's less, but certainly be thinking about doing that before that changes. And number six, following on from that, is around ISAs. I'm going to talk more in a moment about transferring ISAs, but when it comes to new money, don't forget that that £20,000 max that you can pay in every single financial year will reset on the 6th of April. So if you haven't used it, you'll lose it. Again, it's a lot of money. Most people is not going to apply to them, but if it can, if it does, you should be doing it. And remember within that, there is that smaller £4,000 annual allowance for the lifetime ISA. Again, if you don't use that, it does not roll over. So take advantage of those if they are the right accounts for you. And I've got a couple more here, which are talking about allowances still uh, and this one is going to be for those of you who are married uh, but potentially one of you doesn't work at all or is not a basic rate taxpayer at least the other one of you is a basic rate taxpayer you can transfer over some of your personal allowance this is how much money you can earn every year before tax is paid to the higher earner which means they'll pay less tax and that could easily work out about 250 quid ish uh, for the financial year that is about to end now, this resets every year, and if you've already done it in the past, you don't need to do anything. It's automated unless your circumstances have changed. You don't do anything. It just carries on year after year, no problem at all. But if you have not done this before, or your circumstances have changed recently where one of you isn't earning uh, enough money to make you eligible for this uh, marriage allowance, then you can backdate it three years. Again, if that happened, you haven't realized. So if you leave it to the new financial year, well, you're going to miss that third year going back because obviously things will have moved forward slightly. So certainly something to be looking at there as well. Um, I will say with most of the things we're talking about here, uh, there are details over at becleverwithyourcash.com, uh, which will take you through uh, how to take advantage of each of these. Particularly there's an article about this as well, and then within that uh, separate section is funneling you off. And the last one I want to share with you here, again, this is probably only going to be for those of you who are super, super high earners or have suddenly come into a lot of cash, is to take advantage of the annual pension uh, contribution allowance this is set at whichever is lower of sixty thousand pounds a year or your salary so if you earn 80 grand the most you can put in total into your pension will be 60k if you earn 40k the most you can put in is 40k but obviously this was the first year where the actual allowance did increase from 40 to 60 so potentially for some of you that's more money you can put in uh, this year again if you don't use it this year you can start again next year and there is a carry forward so if you miss a year you can push it along but that only goes back again i think three years as well so this year will potentially give you the opportunity to add money in for this year and go back previous years again we are talking about a lot of money and it can be slightly more complicated so if you are talking about these kind of sums it may well be worth talking to a financial advisor uh, just to check this is the right thing to do you don't want to be putting uh, so much money into your pension even if you are a high rate taxpayer particularly because you get that extra tax relief but then you can't access it until you can get that and that could be any age from sort of 57 onwards at its earliest. So I would sort of have a conversation about when you're putting such large sums in. But even if you're doing a small amount extra, it's worth thinking about if you if that will work for you. Right, next up, if you are watching this on YouTube, this episode of Cash Chats, then the next sections are going to be broken into separate videos which you can watch by clicking the links above or in the notes or just go into the channel homepage. First one is looking at different cash back current accounts from Santander. These will pay money back on your bills. Talked about them at the top here, your council tax, your water, your gas, your electricity, your mobile, your broadband, and any pay TV like Sky, a Virgin, but not the likes of Netflix or Disney Plus. If you get my drift, you can earn money back. And I think it's a bit of a no-brainer almost 
The question is, which one do you go for? So I've covered that in this separate video, looking at the edge, the edge up, the one, two, three, and the one, two, three light. Also, ISA transfer. This is a big one for you guys. This is about moving money from one ISA to another. I've gone through all the rules to make sure you are doing this properly and answering many of those questions that you guys have asked, both covering the end of the 2023-24 financial year and the new 2024-25 year, because there have been some slight changes there in terms of how transfers can work. But now we're going to go on to our deals of the week. So in the deals of the week for episode 371 of Cash Chats, remember everything I've spoken about here, all more information, the links, the codes, if you need them, you'll find them at becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash deals. First one to tell you about here is a fix, an energy fix from EDF. Now energy fixes have not been a goer for most of us for a good while now. They were kind of way, 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 way above the price cap. Now, this one is going to be actually when the new price cap comes in from the 1st of April, it's going to be about sort of 5 or 6% below that. So you will be paying less than the price cap, at least for the next three months at the moment. And it's still far away. You know, the next price cap change will be in July. That's looking to drop again, but not necessarily buy as much. So if you lock in now, you'll definitely be saving for the next three months. You'll probably be saving for the three months after that. And then prices potentially either stay where they are or if they go up, obviously. It's not simple. You're locking yourself in, but if you want that security of knowing what you're going to be paying, you worry that rates could suddenly jump up massively, it's not a bad one to go for. This is available from the EDF website and some comparison sites. Uh, what else to tell you about? Uh, wine. As the Sainsbury's waitress, Anacardo, have all got 25% off when you buy six or more bottles of wine. The Tesco offer that's due to finish. I wouldn't be surprised if they extend that because all the other supermarkets are offering it. Uh, what I would do here when you're looking at these offers is just do check around and make sure you can't get those same bottles of wine for less. At other times, maybe there's a third off and you can use websites and apps like trolley.co.uk where you can see the price history of different wine bottles. Or even better, you stack discounted wine bottles right now with this 25% off to get even more off those now, when it comes to booze, BrewDog are running their £1 beer school. You do have to book these tickets. Uh, you can't just rock up to a BrewDog bar to do this. But effectively, for £1, you get to try four of their beers. Works out at two-thirds of a pint for a quid, which isn't too bad. If you want to try some their more fancier beers, not their standard beers, then it's £3. But again, that's a decent saving for a drink out in a pub. Uh, obviously, we're at Easter holidays uh, here now. Lots of ways you can save money with kids. Uh, but one that people don't always realize is if you are traveling by train, uh, then your train ticket itself may well give you two for one access to that uh, particular attraction, whether it's a, a theme park or a castle or whatever it might be. So again, have a look if you're going by train, see if that will save you money. And again, do make sure you shop around. Don't just assume that the first deal you see for these places is the best one. Sticking with Easter, uh, Audi and Sainsbury's are doing really, really cheap veg. For this weekend so i'm sure other supermarkets might jump on this as well so if you are looking forward to having everyone over at the weekend for a nice big uh easter roast or something like that then this is a good opportunity to save on some veg and even if you're not remember a lot of veg when you buy it you can sort of par boil it or whatever it might be and then freeze it you don't have to use it all up uh, in that kind of the first few days before it all goes off and last thing here on easter don't forget easter sunday most shops will be closed Christmas Day and Easter Day are the only days this happened, but so many people always forget and they pop down, I'm going to go and get this stuff. You can't, it's shut. Obviously, some of the smaller ones, uh, they will be open. So the forecourt ones or the locals and metros, they'll be available when it comes to supermarkets. So you might still have to pick up bits and pieces. But this also matters when it comes to Easter egg reductions. Now, in the past, I've been able to pick up some huge discounts on Easter eggs after Easter and making them a little bit more affordable in terms of price per gram. I always get put off by some of the prices of Easter eggs. So, so expensive when you could get the same chocolate in bar shape for a lot, lot less. But after Easter, it can reverse. So uh, unlikely to find anything uh, before Easter Sunday, although it's worth checking some of those small shops on Easter Sunday yourself if you're out and about. But Easter Monday, that's when you will start to see those big reductions. Uh, they Obviously, some places they will go pretty quick. So if you are after some uh, and it works out decent value for money, then that is a good time to be looking for them. Before we go, there's one last thing I do want to ask you and remind you about. I did mention to you a while ago that this year it's 10 years of Be Clever With Your Cash. And every year around the birthday, which took place just a month ago, I do an annual survey just to get your thoughts, your opinions on everything that we do, not just 
in the podcast and the YouTube channel, but on the website, our socials, our newsletter, all those different things. And it's really, really valuable. It's so, so important to help us shape the content that we create for you over the coming year. If you haven't already filled it in, please, please do. Be clever with your cash.com forward slash survey is the URL. They will take you through to the form. Won't take you long to fill in, two, three minutes at most. And if you leave your email address when you complete that form, you'll also be entered into a prize draw to win a £100 voucher as well. And we'll draw that early in April and let the winner know. So we'd really, really appreciate it. If the stuff content I'm providing is useful, uh, please do fill that in. My name is Andy Webb. This is Cash Chats. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, cheers.